Well, I'll tell you what. I definitely could see the game mechanics being displayed throughout this second episode of Angels of Death. Now, if you have never played an RPG Maker game, then most likely you won't see it, but a lot of the different elements throughout this episode is stuff you would see in these type of games. For instance, to the whole switch mechanic of, you know, looking around trying to find a switch to activate the next room. That happens quite often throughout RPG Maker games, and I was pretty surprised to see that type of stuff animated because I mean in all honesty you'd think the animators and the people like you know producing this they would skip over stuff like that but it seems like they really want to adapt for what I'm assuming everything even the elements of the game that relatively isn't probably important mainly for the plot so I'm pretty impressed about that not gonna lie I know it's not the most entertaining thing to see for an episode I, I admit that but it still pleases me to see that they're literally, like, animating a game. That That's exactly what it is. It's kind of like I'm watching uh, a game playthrough, but it's an anime version. That's, that's what it looks like to me. Like, I wonder how, like, similar this is to the game, like, adaptation-wise. Like, I wonder if, like, the mechanics of breaking open the tombstones to be able to open up a Switch is exactly the same in the game. If anyone has played the game Angels of Death and all that, if you can confirm for me, please let me know in the comments below. I am very curious about that just because of how this episode was done. But okay, before I go any further though, I do want to mention something that was told to me in the comments last week. Now, I don't know if this is true. I, I don't know. I didn't pr really look into it or not, I want to be honest. But I was told that apparently the person that made Angels of Death, this game right here, that, you know, this anime that's based off of the game... Apparently, the person that made Angels of Death is the same person that made Ib. And if that is true, oh god, like, this is gonna have a good story. Because Ib's story was really good. It was a really good story. If you've never played Ib, I honestly recommend it. I really do. I know it's not the, like, you know, an RPG game like you would normally say, like, Warcraft, like, World of Warcraft, or, you know, Final Fantasy XV or whatever, or Kingdom Hearts, but, I mean, it's a really nice game in terms of story-wise and all that. So, if you're into a good game, I recommend Ib. And if I'm telling you, if Angels of Death is made by the same creators as Ib, ooh, I'm looking forward to that. I really am looking forward to that, because it has a lot of potential now. But okay, anyways, let's talk about this episode, episode two of Angels of Death. Now, this episode overall has a very different tone about it. And what I mean by that is, is that Zack definitely brought a lot of life to this episode. And I think with his involvement with the way this episode was done, I don't think this would have been a really good episode. Like, if it wasn't for him, this episode would have fallen flat. And the reason why is, is because of Rachel. Now, like I said, I, I know the creator of Ib, if this is the same creator and all that, that's making Angel of Death, I, I, I'm assuming that, you know, it's for a reason. And I have a lot of faith in the writing. But at this time, though, Rachel is a very boring character. She's she's interesting on what happened. Like, I'm curious about what happened to her, but she's boring because of her personality. The only thing that she really has right now as a character is that she wants to die. She doesn't want to, you know, end herself because it's wrong. And, you know, she just, you know, is trying to make it to the end of this. Her only objective is to, you know, get to the end of all this and be able to have Zack end her. That, that's pretty much what it is. And I'm just like... Right now, she's very lifeless, She she's very dead, like she has a deadpan face, and she just, there's some dark humor, which is funny, I admit, but it's not going to be for everyone, so I mean, overall, her character was relatively boring, and if it wasn't for Zack and his, his humor and how he acted, I don't think this episode would have been that good, because the entire moment, like the montage we got with him breaking all the tombstones, that was a pretty funny scene. It, it is jarring. It's a very jarring scene when you look at everything else that was going on, like all the dark stuff that happened throughout the first episode and now this episode. But Zack's character definitely, it fits. The way he's portrayed, it, it just fits the show. And I feel like what it really comes down to also is probably the voice actor. The voice actor really knows a lot of how to betray like crazy characters and stuff. I've heard it in the past. And so, I mean, it makes sense why I could just, you know, understand it or like, you know, this actually works in the end because it doesn't feel like it's just out of place. Like, you know, you know normally how there's a lot of serious stuff and then eventually we get to like some edgy stuff and it's just like the tone just shifted too quickly. It doesn't make sense or it's just like it's jarring to where you 
want to laugh. Well, it's not like that. Honestly, Zack scenes, even though there's a lot of dark humor in it, it's more of the creepy side. It's just, it's very jarring, like, creepy-wise, because of just how he acts, and how he walks or acts towards Rachel, and what he wants. But, I mean, overall, I think the best part of the episode was Zack. But, okay, anyways. Episode 2 of Angels of Death, it's... It raises a lot of questions, but it doesn't really answer a whole lot, which is to be expected. It, since this is based off of a game and all that RPG Maker game, it makes sense why we wouldn't be getting much answers, but a lot of questions. I think time we start really getting, like, you know, questions answered will probably be around the second half of the, you know, the show. Like, for instance, around maybe episode 6 and onward is probably when we'll start getting answers, because for now, it's mainly just the introduction of the story, finding out about our characters, the setting and all that, what's happening here. And throughout the episode, I was constantly questioning with my fury I made in my first episode impressions. I was constantly wondering, is Rachel dead? Is she alive? Is she in purgatory? Is she insane? Those were the questions I, were, I was constantly asking myself while watching episode 2. And even though I finished the episode... I can't really say any of my theories are confirmed true yet. I can't say she's crazy. I can't say she's dead. I can't say she's in purgatory. I, I, I really don't know. It's still not completely answered. There is more hints or it's easier to go with the fury of maybe she's dead already because of the opening song but what happened towards the end and throughout the episode which I will get into that. In the opening song it's a very quick scene but you see someone hanging and all that which if you look very closely, it's obviously Rachel. And if we go by her dialogue in the episode, she's like, it's bad to do that. You, you shouldn't end yourself and all that. And I feel like most likely she doesn't remember. If she is dead, she probably doesn't remember she's dead. And she just, she's always gone along with, you know, it's not right to do something like that. And that's why she's holding back. She doesn't want to be the one to do it. But even then, though, it gives, like, I guess... The possibility that she is dead because of the way the opening was done, but also what she said in this episode with how God doesn't like that, and also how, you know, in this episode with her tombstone, how it popped up. I mean, for all we know, this entire floor, all the different tombstones, could actually be a representation of, you know, what their actual gravestones look like, how they are in the real world. And for instance, Zack is a character, Isaac, his real name, most likely the reason why his grave looked like it did, like an unmarked looking grave, is because of how he was as an individual while he might have been still alive. And when he died, obviously he died somewhere to where nobody would care anymore. No one gave him a proper grave. And so, yeah, that's why it looks like it does. So pitiful. So that's my personal thoughts. I think most likely... All the individuals that are here are probably dead, and, you know, they're unaware that they're dead. Like, they, they know something's going on, but they're unaware they're dead, and, you know, most likely they're being, you know, put on trial right now, figuring out if they have, you know, the capacity to change, maybe, to be able to go into heaven or something. I don't know. That's my personal theory of what I think is going on just because of how episode 2 was done. But like I said, I could be wrong. Now, anyways, let's talk about the child, the giggling and all that. Like, it wasn't necessarily creepy, because I, I do like some horror shows and stuff. I like horror shows, films, TV shows, and stuff like that, so it didn't really creep me out, but I do admit that it makes me wonder if that's an ally or if it's an enemy. Because the creepy giggling and all that, it's obvious that, that uh, the kid knows who Rachel is and knows what Rachel wants and apparently a pretty shiny grave which that's technically what Rachel has wanted throughout the entire episode she asked multiple times for Zach to just end her so I mean it makes sense why the boy would think she would want a grave and all of that but I feel like the more and more I look at this the more and more it looks like it's like Rachel's personal hell like her uh like purgatory it, it, it could potentially be her and like you know purgatory trying to figure out how to get out of it and it's a fascinating watch just because of that but that's about it i mean the episode in terms of content wise it's it's very lacking like i mean it has really good character interactions between zach and rachel i mean zach's entire like montage was very interesting but in terms of actual content and all that or major progression there wasn't really a whole lot i was actually surprised that this floor was not concluded in one episode normally stuff like this would be rushed in one episode and we would move like a floor per episode but that doesn't seem to be the case so i'm glad that that's actually happening we're not getting a rushed mess from angels of death 
But that's about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about this week's episode? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? You know, did you like it? How do you feel about Rachel as a character? How do you feel about Zack? I mean, how do you feel about, you know, the elements from the game being incorporated into the anime? You know, be honest in the comments below. And if you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please leave a like. And also, if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And also, for some reason, even if you subscribe, you don't always get notified. So if you do want to get, you know, a definite notification, like I said, hit the bell icon. And with that, I love you guys. Chibi out.